How Chinese Ads Measure Up. Now this is Thoughtful. Hi, I'm Trevor Lai in Shanghai. Sure, China is an economic force, but is it a creative powerhouse too? We would say the jury's still out on that one. But today we're talking with Jimmy Lam, the president of AdFest, Asia's premier advertising festival, held every March in Pattaya, Thailand. Jimmy, you've seen the winning work from this year's festival. What were some of the thoughts from the jury members? A few years back, when the jury sees some great work, they'll be surprised to see, oh, this is from China. But these last two years, it's no surprise. You know, when they see good work from China, in a way, it's taken for granted because of the sheer size of the market. Quantity, you quality. But given that you have that sheer size factor, there were only two real major winners. So doesn't that actually not really coincide with what you've You have to look at it in another perspective. There are a total of 15 award group or 15 award categories at FS, four of which they don't give best of show, the craft, the production side. Then you're left with 11. Now two out of 11, uh, best of show, it's not that bad. Think about this. So that should be a good answer. When did you start seeing China showing better? I mean, you're saying two of 11 is, is not bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, is this the first year that it's, it's won this money? Um, I think back four years ago, we start seeing China winning gold, uh, not necessarily best of show. Uh, obviously, it's not as much as the other market like Japan, Singapore, Thailand, but if you go through the, the, the curve, it's growing. Now, there were two standout campaigns, as we've mentioned, and one of them was actually from a while back. Um, a lot of the viewers might recognize it from Khan, which is Samsonite's Heaven and Hell uh, series. Let's give them a chance to look at the work again, and we'll talk about it. So obviously this one's from a, a little while back. Why do you think this continues to do well at the award shows? I mean, this uh, ad is really world class. I mean, it won in every award show. And uh, you can conclude that the best of China is as best of anywhere around the world. Um, so I won't be surprised that, uh, that it, will, it will continue to win if we enter more awards you know, on the other territories. Well, the other one, which is actually one of my favorites, personal favorites, was the Keyboard of Isolation. Let's show part of the clip from the Keyboard of Isolation by DDB for our viewers.
Now, obviously, that's uh, really a PSA uh, as opposed to the, the Samsonite. Uh, from your standpoint, is this type of creative something specially focused in China because of the issues and the social issues that the Chinese community is facing? Or do you think that this would work just as well um, overseas? I think, I think that this situation is universal. There's, there's a problem of everybody spending too much time online. It's universal. But you really have to admire the creative person behind this campaign. Think about the lateral thinking. Right? The, the problem, you know, people spending too much time to how they come up with this installation uh, is just, you know, great. Well, what I was really impressed by is actually, you know, China already is known for, in some cases, the production side of things. So production of scale and things like that. But I was really impressed by the concept through to execution. And, and then how it, would, it sort of grew in scale yep. as it started to get traction in the marketplace. But what behind closed doors, I mean, how did the jury members discuss this in comparison to perhaps some of the more commercial uh, efforts or some of the other entries from outside of China? Well, I guess for jury, what will knock them off the, uh, the chair will we simply say, gee, I couldn't, I've never thought of it can be done like that. I mean, that is, is, is not easy at all because all the jury, they, they've seen it all. Uh, to be able to impress them by something like, I didn't know it can be done like that, I never thought about doing that, that's gotta be the best of show. There is some criticism sometimes though that these issues kind of make it uh, an easier category in the sense that, I mean, especially in China, there are a lot of these issues. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of easy to cherry pick a few of them and then to create these magnificent concepts around them because there are, it's such an ample canvas to, to work with. What do, you, what do you say to that? Absolutely, they're easy to do you know, pro bono work, um, but the challenge is still, you know, how good is the consumer insight? How much you can get people to take notice? Because everybody is aware of the problem, everybody knows what the problem is. The point is, how are you gonna stop him for a while and think about it and say, yeah, yeah, I know that, I know that, what, what do you want me to do? I mean, that, that is the challenge for any public service uh, act, is what next, the action. And for that campaign specifically, did they talk more about the results afterwards? I saw some of the awareness results and I saw some of the engagement in results at the installation level, mm -hmm. but you know, what were some of the long-term effects or, or benefits from that campaign? I can recall that uh, either. I mean, obviously, I, as, a, as the president of the festival, I won't be able to spend that much time in every judging room. Remember, there are seven panels judging simultaneously. Sure. I only call upon when they have dispute. Right. You know, and they say, oh, we want to break the rule. You know, we, can we? You know, the, so I, I, I think I, I, there wasn't much, time, if I can remember, about the, the consequence. Sure. And so there is, that doesn't really factor into the, the jury's decision. Really, it's about what you said, the impact and yeah. sort of the, the wow factor, I guess, and in terms of breaking through in terms of the insight to the consumer or the target audience and then their creative execution. Yeah. Of it. Uh, at this stage, the, most of the uh, FS categories are, are really creative centric, are really into uh, the idea, the insight, and how well it's implemented. Um, in time, I'm sure the elements of uh, effectiveness will be there. And DDB also won for its West One Music Outdoor Campaign. Your thoughts? I think it's a great uh, outdoor, uh, a piece of great outdoor work because think about it, it, it could have been just a two-dimensional thing of a piece of work. I mean, they, they used it, the real, you know, have filmed that. Uh, just that uh, this day, you know, apart from the jury, it's just not easy to impress the audience because the audience seen it all. Right. And there were a few other winners from China that won bronze awards. Were there any that stood out for you personally? Um, as far as I recall, I, I, I quite like the, that uh, print um, ad from, uh, for Rico, right? for the, for the, the camera, camera, because yeah. you, you see a lot of camera ad, you see a lot of them. But this one chose to, to present the product not like an ad. That, that's not easy. But sure, we all, the creative people all can do a lot of fancy stuff, but to get it over to client to approve it, that's difficult. I mean, it, in a way that that's, that's very like, much like an art piece and the copy behind it is also have a lot of, you know, true humanity 
in it. I, I quite I quite like the look and the feel of it because it doesn't look like an ad. Right. And so of all the ones that you saw for this year's Ad Fest, which one is your favorite and why? Um, the uh, the installation of the online uh, um, you know that that. The keyboard, keyboard thing, device because you know it just amazed me how they gonna start from point A and then to point B, you know because the the issue of people spending too much time online is is very common. Everybody but how does. how can you do that in a step by step? You really have to be you were amazed with the the, the, the what's going on with the creative guy and then how he pushed through things. Is there a campaign that you personally saw and noticed and liked but wasn't awarded? I wouldn't be in the position to do that because I, I wasn't able to spend enough time during the judging session. Obviously, it would be impossible for me to go through all 3,000 entries. Um, I mean, the one campaign I, I really like best this year, but it's not from China, uh, is from Japan, a TV campaign for a prawn shop. I mean, that I really think, oh, was for an ad for a prawn shop, the way they do it, and, you, and making the, the item that the owner, you know, put in the prawn shop, be, be really, have a lot of story to tell, very humane, a lot of, you know, story about life. I mean, I really, I really like it. I mean, I never thought that a prawn shop can do ad like that. Let's look at the ads from Japan that you just mentioned. ずっと一緒にいい曲ね。オリジナル。俺とあいつで作ったんだ。いいコンビ。でもあいつもついにサラリーマン。子供も生まれて、はい、解散ってわけ。迎えに来るわよ。きっとね。無理だよ。でもあ
I mean, at your festival and other award ceremonies. I mean, you know, whether it's the Sirocco campaign or you know the uh, the other ones that we've spoken about today, I think Li Ning's actually stood out to yeah. me in terms of a Chinese brand, yeah. uh, really being innovative and creative. Have you seen in your time, um, you know, at AdFest, have you seen a real shift in terms of the Chinese brand's presence? Not, Not really. Yet. Not yet. Uh, and once again, this is the the entire process of of, of Chinese client. Uh, weeding open their mind uh, to to more of the uh, humanity side rather than the hardcore product information to quick sales. That takes time. That's the, I don't think a one or two agency can can turn the tide. You know? And and you think that the agencies right now are they really still more deferring to the clients? more conservative direction or do you think there are a few agencies that are starting to push back a little bit harder and perhaps guide their clients? There are always few agencies who push but they are just a small number. I mean if you look at the massive uh, market and uh, you can you can argue maybe easier to to push ideas through the multinational client because they are, they've seen it all, they are more open um, but as I said in time I, I think the, the mainland Chinese client they have to they will have to uh, be open-minded as well because there's, there's competition. And you just mentioned about there not being one China and the sort of level of quality and how that perhaps is different in the different markets. But I mean, it's not a fair comparison directly to Japan and, and Thailand and Singapore and, and India. But do talk a little bit about how you see the creative minds and how the markets evolve, let's say for example in Japan versus where China is today. And you've said it's gonna take time, but other than time, there's gotta be also some actual action and, and some perhaps industry-wide you know, sort of movement that can happen to, to push it in that direction. Simply put, you take an idea that's quite well received in Shanghai or in Beijing, you take that idea to the, to the west district, the Chongqing, to Chengdu, the area, they see things not exactly the same. Uh, and you take it to the south, to north, and what about the, the newer frontier, the, 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 the Xinjiang and all that? There are definitely uh, a difference of receptiveness uh, from the consumer, not to mention the client. So I, I always feel that it's, it's easy for us to look at China as one market. But simply, if you put it north, south, west, uh, uh, and east, there's already uh, quite significant difference in, in terms of uh, receptiveness to creativity and also the scale of the people working in that agency. So talking about agencies though, I mean, isn't it true that essentially all of the agencies represented here are global agencies? Yeah. I mean, there is no China Dentsu, for example, you know, the equivalent of that. Have you seen any shifts in that, all, uh, in that trend at all? There are actually uh, a few pretty good uh, logo agency. They just don't have the volume of work for them to, to you know, be a significant player. I mean, you look at the best work from some of the local agents, they are very good. Um, obviously, as you said, easy to do a public service ad, and when it comes to real client, they, 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 they don't have to, they don't just don't, they don't have the portfolio to enable them to do that. I'm not saying all international agencies do great work, but as I said, Quantity, quality. you quality. But do you think that part of your role as an industry leader, and people do look at you now, uh, you know, across as really leading with AdFest and your other organizations, do you feel that part of your role is to help Chinese agencies and creative studios gain more of a profile and to, you know, help actually move the tide in that direction? Definitely. I mean, the, the, the other hats I, I wear, I, I, I do a lot of training for ad agency and um, and I particularly enjoy doing training for agency in the second tier and the third tier city because that's where they need most in you know, training to get them the exposure. One thing I have to be very careful is that not give them, is particularly the creative people there, not give them too high an expectation because at the end of the day they're facing the same client who are not yet ready to do the kind of work that we see, you know, making it in the in 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 in, in festival like Ad Fest. But I do think that it would be good if they can send more, you know, expose themselves more with the client to see the great work. Within China, 
and beyond China. Where do you see AdFest heading, you know, in the years ahead? How do you see it evolving or growing? I mean, is there a goal or milestone for you that you really hope to, to see it achieve, especially in terms of Chinese creativity and how it's represented at the, the festival? Obviously, I know that's not your specific mandate, but personally, I mean, with your time in China and seeing how uh, all the trends that you've mentioned, do you feel like there's a, a place you'd like to see the festival in a few years where we, it isn't today? Um, for 2012, the, uh, the third number, you know, in terms of the number of delegates, China already came number three in terms of the number of delegates there. But still, that number is in proportion to the size of the market. Uh, I always believe that when you see more, you learn more, you, you improve faster. So in a way, if, if I have a mandate it to see more uh, ad agency people, production people, and marketer in China uh, to attend the festival, to exchange ideas, to learn. Not necessary to compete there because there's, there's always two sides of any festival. Competition is only one side, the other is learning. Uh, FS put a lot of effort in education, so I hope you see more um, you know, local agency, Chinese agency, local marketer to make a present at FS. It's, it's just what you said before, it's a very creative take on something that we've taken for granted. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, thanks for being on Thoughtful China. That wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Tudo and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. See you again. Hi there, just a reminder, Thoughtful China and Advertising Age are collaborating on a conference about advertising in China's lower tiers in Shanghai on September 5th. Some of the country's top marketing experts will share insights about how to grow your business in China's third and fourth tier markets. And for the first time, EdAge will bring its Women to Watch Awards to China with an awards dinner held on the same day. We hope you'll join us in honoring some of the marketing industry's most promising female professionals. Tickets and further details are available now on adage.com and thoughtfulchina.com.